Hello Red Bags, it's Joe Plays Games back once again with another Arc Survival Evolved Extinction reveal. You guys should know by now they're showing loads of stuff off, including the first look at the Frost Titan. This is part of the Extra Life event, it's ongoing right now, it's available for 24 hours on the Survive the Arc stream. Go and give them a follow. Despite my displeasure at console version being delayed, it's still a good cause that they're doing this for charity. They've raised $33,000 already. But of course, the big news is we've got an interview with Chris Willoughby. He's the guy that is responsible pretty much for Extinction now. Forget Jeremy Stieglitz, the lead creator of Arc 5 Evolved. He's working on Atlas. Chris Willoughby is the guy that has been kind of gelling and getting everything together for Extinction. This is first proper gameplay, true gameplay of the Frost Titan. It is the Frost Titan. You can see it's absolutely huge. Absolutely crazy how much damage this guy can do. You're going to be tackling this in two different ways. You're going to be facing it by trying to tame it or you can kill it for XP. That is going to be a lot harder than you think. At first I was looking at it thinking, this guy, this guy ain't no trouble. He's big, yeah, but I'll just keep my distance. But he can hit absolutely killer blows in a while you're going to see him take down a bunch of t-rexes in one swipe it's massively op that's why you may need the brand new mech suit the brand new mech that's coming in to take on these titans because oh my gosh it's going to be hard so there's two ways like i said you can tame it you have to shoot basically the corruption that's kind of running up its body each time you get rid of one part of the corruption so at the moment you can see it's on its ankle it will move to another body part and you have to keep aiming at that part with any sort of weapon you just have to damage that corruption to get the corruption off once you've got all the corruption off you will then fully tame it you keep the tame for five days on the extinction map five days you can transfer it to other servers if you decide to transfer it to other server though you can only keep it for an hour what you're seeing right now is the frost damage that it also does it can freeze you the player it brings up obviously the frost icon and obviously i imagine that will take away your life if it brings your temperature all the way down it can also freeze other dinosaurs you're fighting in the big massive ice biome this has been revealed we knew this was going to be happening this is where you kind of summon it. There's a mechanic to activating these guys. And then once you actually go around trying to take it down, that's where you can go and take it away from the dome. They won't be running around the whole map, only in these specific domes until you've tamed it. Once you tame it, you can move it anywhere on the map. They deal absolute loads of damage. There are no minions. There is nothing like this. There's going to be no small creatures like fighting Megapithecus and there's monkeys appear. It's just you and whatever you bring against this big, massive, huge beast. It looks incredible. I'm not going to lie. I'm quite impressed. I was a bit dubious about the idea of having a massive, huge titan in the game like this aping sort of godzilla and maybe a little bit of monster hunter but it is i like it i really like it i really like the idea of being super powerful look how much damage it's going to do to these t-rexes now look at that wow so at the moment it's level 1500 when you tame it it jumped up to around 225 that we'll see in a minute they're going to cut it short and they're going to force tame it and it's going to do the job it is going to be stupid amounts. Like you can see the damage it's doing. So it's got its pound attacks. It's got a two-handed pound attack. And it's got its frost breath. Which basically fires these huge snowballs. It is crazy what we're going to be doing with these guys. You can only have one version of this guy on a server on official. So if there's already an ice titan running around. And you want to get your own ice titan. You'll have to kill the one that's currently there before you can summon and claim your own now you can kill it straight up and if you shoot it anywhere else other than the corruption you'll just be doing damage to it and you can kill it like i said though depending on how much damage you do to the corruption is how strong it's going to come out there is no alpha beta or gamma it all depends on how good you are at putting damage on it if you're shooting the creature and taking its health down accidentally shooting it in the non-corrupt areas you're going to mean that you're going to have a less powerful titan so really aim for them crucial areas to get the most out of it it comes i do believe with the the saddle once they force tamed it i didn't see and put anything on it it just happened to pop it up it looks like because it's such a short time they don't want you having to worry too much about that i could be wrong i could be wrong but like i said it depends how much damage you do to it will differentiate whether or not it comes out as a alpha or a gamma or etc obviously there's still some things we've got cleared up and it's hard to get all this information while watching one live stream then getting it back to you so if i've got anything wrong apologies i will be doing proper thorough videos when the game is fully out but oh my gosh 
Alongside this, there was a bunch of reveals too. We first got a tiny little glimpse of the Falcor never ending story, uh, Wiren, 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 I want to say it was called, which is actually the Moon Dog. Now, I told you guys about this on the Moon Wolf. It's generally what it's going to be called. I do believe it's going to be called the Mangamar. I may have said that wrong. Apologies if I butchered that name too, but that's what it's going to be. You can see it in the bottom right corner there. It's just sticking out. It's a very, very small shot. It's obviously not of detail, but it looks like it moves a bit like a rock drake. There's no confirmation yet whether or not these guys fly. Um, by the looks of things, it looks like it's walking around on its legs. So I reckon it's going to be like a rock drake. I don't think it's going to necessarily be a flyer like a wyvern. Now you can see it's going to the boundaries now, back with the frost titan. We also get a glimpse at some gas bags too. They're kind of floating around in the area, so you will see them in a second, very minutely. We've just got a good chance to look at the more of the detail. So, really, the whole Earth is a wasteland. According to Chris in the interview in the Q&A, the city is where a lot of players are going to be building. And, really, you're only going to be coming out here to get resources, because this is where all the corrupted are. The corrupted inhibit all of the lands where not in these domes. So in these domes you've got like specific biomes, you've got the frost biome, but the west of the wastelands, it might not be necessarily a good place to build your base because you'll have things like these creatures coming and attacking you and they'll always be taken out by corrupted. So it's a good idea that you'll build up in the big cities and then you'll come further. You can see clearly now more pictures, you can see almost like pods, apartments in the background as well. Huge landscape, God knows what that is in the background. So imagine if this is the monster, Remember, the King Titan is 10 times bigger than this guy. Absolutely crazy. The Mech Titan is going to be the best way to take these on. That's what they've said as well. They'll be about the same size, I do believe, the Mech is going to be, or the Mech Suit. So it's really interesting stuff. I can't wait to get my hands on this. I'm going to be doing Dino Wars with my patrons. If you want to join me, go and check out my Patreon. The link's in the description down below. We're going to be doing exclusive events, hosting big, huge Dino Wars with these guys, and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. I can't wait. I'm going to leave you now with the rest of the interview because it's filled with loads of good information. You'll get a really good understanding. I really like this guy, Chris. You know, lots of developers are really good at their job. They often just have way too much going on. So although we're really critical, especially me, I do appreciate they do go to some extreme lengths to get the game that we want out. It may be rough around the edges, it may not always be the game we want because of the bugs and problems, but there is no game out there that is really stretching the boundaries. Look at Fallout 76 at the moment, rehashing Fallout 4 and just chucking on some multiplayer on it, not doing anything different on you, and then take a look at Ark and tell me they're not doing something brand new. So. I'm going to leave you the rest of the interview. I am Jay Plays Games. Expect more videos like this, giving you details, everything that's happening with the live stream. I will be giving you absolutely A class guides, tutorials when we get even more information on these. Please make sure you hit this video up with a like. Go and check out the orbital drop gameplay I showed you as well. And I'll see you, rat bags, very soon. P.S. It's not my mic making the sounds, it's the guys that are live streaming that have got mic problems. I'll see you guys later doors off of where we thought we were going to be and it just it amazes us that you know you guys have you guys have uh continued to support us and uh um we we're very appreciative of it yeah we're up to thirty-three thousand. wow that's crazy Already. yeah that's so cool halfway <laughs> yeah so it's all you know like like we've said a couple of times it's all for the kids and uh i mean we do it for them like really i mean i I, uh, I was just talking to my mom, actually, before I came in here, and she's a big ARC fan. She's at home. Like, she, she sent me pictures the other day of her uh, her raft that she's got. Like, she's still, she's just kind of new to ARC, so she's still playing single player on the island. That's adorable. But she's got her raft, and she tamed her first tech uh, Stego the other day, and she's having a good time. But, but you know, I, we, had, um, we had someone from Make-A-Wish here a few months ago, and just the fans are... are why we do all of this. I think the person you had actually donated to the stream. Right? Oh, did he really? Yeah, I remember seeing, uh, thank you for letting me come to the office oh, or so, something. That's so yeah. amazing. Yeah, and, and for the kids, I mean, you know, I, I'm here doing this because as a kid, I was amazed with video games. Like it was, you know, I, uh, it was kind of the place where I could be myself and, mm -hmm. and, and be the most comfortable and you know for me I, there's this cheesy thing that i always say that like at the end of the day my favorite game is making one and the reason i say that is that you know ma in making a game there's all these different challenges and and hard problems to overcome that you you don't know what the answer is going to be and you don't know how you're going to get there
But the other end of that, the reward is so immense. Like the the Just you know meeting fans together. and yeah. and hearing how they like the things that you're doing and and meeting kids and meeting people's lives who you've impacted. I mean, I make video games because of the great games that people made when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and I it makes me it sends chills down my spine to think of that coming out of the stuff we're making today. When I was at uh, TwitchCon, I met uh, well they're actually friends of mine, but they told me that they recently got engaged and the first time they ever met was playing in our SOTF tournament. That's so cool. And I'm like, oh, that's yeah. so cute. I mean, that, one, one of the things I love about our studio is that we, um, we've really, you know, obviously there's ARC and we've built an ecosystem around modding ARC and, mm -hmm. and we've delivered a, an insane number of options for running kind of custom ways to play. And then what's neat is like that ecosystem, we've actually kind of integrated on the human level. Lots of people that work here are former players, yep. you, your former players, the yep. former player, Zoomers, yep. Josh is a former player. Everybody <laughs> are, everybody are these players that that got into the game first, and then were passionate about it, and and you know brought their own their own creativity to it, or their own contributions from a community level and an engagement level, and then we've kind of been able to pull that in. It's very unique uh, for us to, be, to to have done that. Yeah, I don't imagine it's very common to have so many people based in the community and then have them work on the game. No. I think it, yeah. I mean, I can toot my own horn that it, I think it provides a unique experience when you have the experiments as a player and then work on the game that you were a player yeah. of first. Yeah, and uh, you know, at the end of the day, we, as a studio, we like to build things that are bigger um, than, than we, we, you know, maybe have the manpower to go and do. Um, but we're very passionate <laughs> about doing it. And so exactly. we, we bring people who care very much about the games that we're making and, uh, and the fans of our games. And we think that at the end of the day, it's worth it because we make something that you know, has these crazy powerful titans that can do all this amazing stuff that you know, I've worked at a AAA studio that would not bite off trying to <laughs> accomplish this. Certainly not for an expansion, not with the, a team the size of ours and on the schedule that we're on. And you know sometimes it can be a little rough around the edges, but we, but at the end of the day we think it's worth it in order to deliver kind of the broadest experience mm -hmm. and the the most things that we can to the fans. So. Do we have any questions or anything? Yes, I have. So you can decide whether or not you want to. Oh gosh. <laughs> Jen. <laughs> Jen. <laughs> well, there was one that was from. Uh, our friend at Dodo Dex, and he was curious about um, the craftable creatures. So we've talked a little bit about that you can get the blueprints from killing their wild counterparts. Yeah. And uh, we also showed at TwitchCon that you could get some of the blueprints from the supply uh, crates mm -hmm. after defense. Um, he, was, he asks, um, I assume the ingredients are hard to obtain. Do you craft it on a special... Station? Oh, Mike in the beard. <laughs> um, and can these kind of creatures be leveled? The robotic creatures. So he's uh, just fishing for info. On wait, can you guys. repeat the first part of the question? Um, are the crafting ingredients hard to obtain, and how do you craft it? Basically? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. So, uh, so as you said. Uh, for the scout and the enforcer, um, you get the blueprints for them primarily through killing one in the wild. Mm -hmm. And what's cool is, you know, it, we've brought a few different new taming mechanics to the game. Um, one obviously being the Titan stuff that um, we were just showing. Another being the uh, this construction mechanic. And the way that it works is when you encounter a strong one in the wild, it's going to drop a blueprint that's equivalent to its strength. And then the... Similar to items, the uh, components required uh, to construct that blueprint or to craft that dino or the, the robot will mm -hmm. be equivalent to its strength. And so uh, they may be common things, but they'll be quantities that, that make it more difficult. And the key thing there is that we view kind of the city as uh, kind of the main starting area in the game. That's, yeah. that's where people are going to be doing kind of their, their initial gameplay. And we wanted people, if they encounter a scout early, uh, a, a low-level one, to be able to take that out and be able to craft it early. And the same with the enforcer. And to that end, we're kind of changing things up a little bit with the way that we approach, quote-unquote, tech items and um, technology and constructing it. 
And so what you'll find sprinkled throughout the city are these terminals um, that are left over from the Homo Deus. And you can interact with these terminals and you can actually, you can charge batteries there, but you can also do, um, uh, you can craft lower level tech items there. And so the scout and the enforcer are, are two of those items. Very fancy. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. There's another one about, oh yeah, because we had talked about how, uh, I'll do one more, because this one I think that a lot of PVE people are concerned about is, um, how will they know what areas are safe to build? And I think specifically that's in reference to the orbital supply drops. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. So, um, I mean, generally what I would say is, you know, the, uh, the extinction, we wanted to make sure that we uh, sent along and delivered on the feeling that, that Earth is dead or dying and needs to be uh, resurrected and needs, to be, needs you to come and, and help it. And a key component of that, two key components of that, are the corrupted dinos, um, the corrupted creatures out in the wasteland, and the other is the wasteland itself. And so, generally speaking, um, across PvP, um, PvE, and even single player, um, we've obviously shown the ice biome here, we've shown the city in the trailer before, um, there are other areas that are similar throughout the map that we're leaving for people to discover. Uh, but I would generally say that for your more permanent buildings, you'll want to stick to the biomes. You'll want to stick to the city. Um, you can build in the wasteland. You just face that threat of corrupt dinos. You face that threat of orbital supply drops and element veins and things like that. And I think there are, you know, across all of the different game modes, there are people who want that challenge and are, are interested in that challenge, even if it's kind of going across the border <laughs> a little bit into a little bit more hardcore gameplay. We're hoping that you know they'll they'll kind of experience all of that here in this world. And what's neat is you know if you want to live in the city and make this really cool like te high tech Ewok village style city across all the platforms and everything, but you want to make scavenging runs out to the wasteland, you can listen for when an orbital supply drop and then head out. Uh, comes down, yeah. and then look for it on the horizon, and then get your gear together, grab some cryopods, pack up some dinos, and then head out there and, and take it on. 